How you doing folks? Now that we have the engine sorted in this MGB, and it'll actually go. It's now time to make sure it'll actually stop. Okay, so I spared you the boring bit of me taking off the wheel and all of that, but uh, the first thing I've noticed is uh, on the back of the car, the handbrake, uh, the handbrake lever is, or the handbrake cable is disconnected. So, um, now I know that the lever seems to be seized up inside the car, but uh, let's get the drum off first of all and see what we're looking with inside, uh, looking at inside here. Okay, take these two screws out and they are actually incredibly loose and uh, oiled and everything. So um, that's a, we're off to a good start on, it, on that regard. So I'm hoping when I take this off that it's all, it's all nice and clean and there's new springs and, uh, and everything inside. So let's see how, uh, how we're looking. Oh yes. Oh, very nice indeed. Well, they're practically new. The drums are uh, in very good order as well. So, um, yeah, happy days. So really all I'm gonna do here is just maybe nothing. <laughs> see if the handbrake lever is actually free to move. It seems to be. I'm not sure how much pressure it should require in order to move, but um, certainly uh, it uh, everything bodes well for, for the issue with the back brakes literally just being the um the handbrake not being connected so uh yeah i mean happy days the fuel tank is looking fairly scabby there now i will say just looking at it i really haven't gotten much of a look underneath this car to tell you the truth so um it's kind of a bit of a voyage of discovery it's not bad it's not really not bad there's a few little areas but i mean to be honest with you it's a you know it's a it's a, it's, it's older than i am like it's a 42 year old car so um yeah only a little bit older than me by the way so anyway um yeah uh let's uh, let's just get something on that um let's see it just seems like it's literally just requiring a bit more force than, will, than I'm able to put on it, to be honest with you. The fortunate thing is, by the way, I got a new handbrake cable, so um, that's not going to be a major issue. Uh, let's get the other side jacked up, and to be honest with you, what I'm going to do now, before I do anything else, is I'm going to replace that handbrake cable, because that's going to be the number one problem. And in order to do that, I have to take the driver's seat out. Um, you don't have to, but it certainly makes life an awful lot easier. So uh, let's, uh, let's get all that done. Taking the seat out is only four bolts in this car and they actually walked out. I'm not even joking. There was no, they did not put up a fight at all. So uh, happy days. Uh, this car is just a delight to work on, to be honest with you. So anyway, here's the offending article. So there's our little brake light switch actually. Uh, that's the end stop and this is the quadrant with the, uh, the, the teeth for the pole to uh, work against. And what I think has actually happened here is that the carpet has actually snagged on it. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to take those two screws out and we're going to have a look and see what we're dealing with here and then we'll uh, we'll go from there. Okay, so the largest posi drive bit I have and that was now loose. It's not Phillips, it's posi drive, okay? So just make, make sure you know the difference because it can make all the difference between having a bolt with a stripped head and not. Or should I say a screw with a stripped head? So now, let's take that off, and that hasn't gotten us anywhere so far, so we need to, we need to investigate further. I'm reckoning there's a third screw, and it's going to be in behind there, isn't it? So we need, yes, there most definitely is a third screw in there. So we need to get this carpet out of the way, and get that handbrake lever down. So what I'm thinking I might do is I might... Try and get a screwdriver in under there, because what I think, like, the button is pressed fully down. Oh, there we go, look at that. All right. So let's get the whole assembly off. Now, 
now let's have a look and see what the arrangement is with this I think what I need to do no nope, it'll come out this way I'm wondering do I need to detach it underneath underneath the car in the tunnel or will it come out this hole yes it will okay so yeah no I need to uh what I need to do is I need to detach the cable underneath the car and then uh that will allow me to take the handbrake lever off, address that, and then we can have a look at the cable itself. Now, I know it did, the cable may work after all of this, but that being said, I have a new cable, so I'm going to fit it. So, um, yeah, let's, uh, let's put them aside for the moment, and I'm going to slither in underneath the car and have a look and see what is involved in taking off that cable. You guys probably have a better view than I do, but it's just a big nut. And it's finger tight. So let's undo that. So we'll undo, yeah, we'll take that off and then that will allow us to take the handbrake cable out of the mechanism. Um, we'll be doing greasing points as well. I just noticed actually, I thought it was only the earlier cars that had the grease points on the uh, drive shafts. Apparently this one has as well. Anyway, that looks to me like it's a half inch, uh, half inch spanner. It's either half inch or nine sixteen. So I'm just going to get a ratchet spanner on because it's just gotten a little bit tight there on me. All right, so here's uh, obviously the uh, handbrake cable or the handbrake lever itself. Now, um, the reason the button wasn't protruding fully was actually a simple reason. This piece here, the the, the hand grip basically had slid up, slid up, so I was able to slide it back. So now we can see there's our little ratchet pole there, okay. And what we're going to do is you can see here that that's quite tight to move, okay. So what we want to do is we want to get that lubed up and make sure that that's all nice and free. So what I'll do is there's a nut there. I'm going to undo the nut. I'm going to take that off. And I'm going to clean it all, I'm going to put fresh grease on it, put it back together again, and then our handbrake lever itself is good to refit to the car, and then we can worry about the cable then afterwards. Okay, so I have that all removed there now anyway, so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to get the wire wheel onto that, and just give it a little, uh, little bit of a, a tickle with that, and we will uh, grease it up, put it back together. Okay, and we'll just get something to clear out the little, uh, the, the bore inside that. And then we we'll put it back together again, should be fine. All right, so in your absence, a few things happened. Um, the camera battery went dead, first of all. So I had to bring that and charge it. But uh, that, I think, is pretty decent. Okay, so the other thing I did was remove the rest of the cable. The rest of the cable is literally held together with a, 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 a nut and washer that comes through there. And uh, that's not rust, don't forget, that's the colour of the car, by the way. <laughs> um, gave me a fright for a second when I looked and I was like, oh yeah, it's a brown car. Um, but uh, yeah, so there's a little uh, thingy on the cable that comes through there. Now, it's, it's going to be a bit of a battle to get that back into place. But uh, yeah, I'll show you what else we're dealing with. We're looking at the back of the car here now, and you can see up above here that there is this stupid little leather strap kind of thing with the uh, handbrake cable attached to it. And I don't like that at all, to be honest with you. Um, and anyway, it's not the type that's actually fitted to the other car, and it's not the can it's not the type that the handbrake cable I got is for. So I robbed the one from the purple MG. Yes, I know I'm on a slippery slope by doing things like that, but the thing about it is, that the other car, uh, the back axle has to come out of it anyway, and I'm certainly not going to be putting that system onto the other car. I'll be putting the same system as what I'll now be fitting into this into it. So I'll just, uh, I'll have to get a couple of spares. Either way, I'm going to have to get a couple of spares. I'll probably need a donor car for that one. But um, yeah, look, the focus of our attention at this moment in time is this brown MG. So uh, yeah, uh, let's get the rest of the cable out and we will um, bolt in a bracket. And this is the bracket in question. All cleaned up, greased and ready to fit to the uh, brown car, okay? So uh, the two uh, bolt holes here, basically this bolts onto the diff, cable comes in here and there's a little eye end type of thing that goes in there and you clamp it all together and job's a good one. Okay, we're into the second day of the brake repairs on this uh, MGB here, so uh, let's continue on where we left off. We were working on the handbrake cable, so I got the old one out, so it's now time to fit the new one. Now, as I previously explained, there are two different types of cables, okay, and I got one even though my car is fitted with the other. But to be honest with you, the older type just appeals to me more, to tell you the truth. It, uh, it has a pivot point properly uh, mounted to the back axle, which this then fits into. The new one has this little stupid, uh, like, 
rubber or leather, whatever it looks like leather, uh, strap that uh, bolts onto a point and then the, okay, it's got a solid rod rather than the, the cable, but the cable's fine so long as it's kept greased. Uh, the other thing as well is the new one does not have a grease nipple on it, whereas this one does. So um, it means that we can actually service it. Given the fact that this one is actually seized up, I would uh, I would think that actually being able to service it is definitely a positive thing. So uh, yeah, the first thing we need to do is we need to slither in underneath the car, and I need to get that uh, get that little lad there located in the tunnel just up beside the drive shaft, which is going to be great crack altogether. And uh, yeah, then we can uh, we can attach this to the actual handbrake lever, and then we will be able to kind of work our way backwards on the car and get everything hooked up. Then we need to start looking at the hydraulics on the back axle and seeing if they're actually working. All right. right so there's the washer and nut on the uh, the little block that goes on the end of the cable in place, and it was not a difficult job at all. So I don't know what people are talking about uh, saying it was. It's a bit, little bit fiddly, I suppose. I mean, and uh, you're lying underneath the car, but it's right forward of the tunnel, uh, the the guard for the drive shaft. I don't know whether you can get a good view of it, but it's up there anyway. And here's where the cable is coming through and onto the handbrake lever. It's very hard for me to film this, to tell you the truth, because I've literally got about, um, well, enough for my uh, my body and a few inches above me just to, to get in at the car, but uh, beyond that, I'm a little bit tight for space. So anyway, um, I've only finger uh, that's only finger tight there now, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna attach the cable next on this end, and the cable is hooked into a uh, little uh, clip up this end, and then we'll just start, as I said, just working our way back. And uh, yeah, so it'll be, um, uh, it'll be, you know, I mean, it'll be, it'll be handy enough, it'll be handy enough. And what I'll do is I'll just show you the end result and uh, film whatever I can. In case you doubt me, it's not exactly a comfortable working environment under here. Alright, so the cable is in now and uh, seems to be working alright, although I can't kind of fully test it until I've uh, put the drums on and adjusted everything. But for the moment anyway, everything is in place as it needs to be. Um, the uh, uh, conversion from the late type to the earlier type uh, seems to go fairly alright. So uh, yeah, I'll just, uh, I'll just walk you through what we have so far. So here's our pivot point here. And that's the ca where the cable comes into. Now, there's supposed to be spring washers on that, hence why it's a bit wobbly. I'll, I'll try and get a couple of spring washers. For the moment, it's all right. The cable is rooted around there now. I put a cable tie around the axle because I just felt it was kind of hanging a little bit too low. There is a, uh, there's a proper P-clip up there, and there's another one in the axle tube, which are working fine. And then you can see out at the wheel end, we have our cables connected. So when you pull on the cable, basically, it's just going to... Um, it's going to pull both of those wire, uh, both of those uh, cables, and um, yeah, I mean that's uh, that's basically that. So what it does is it kind of moves the pivot over the other direction. Um, I'll try and uh, film the operation of it now in a little while, but let's uh, let's get on to the uh, adjustment of the drums next. So this is the adjuster, and on the back of the adjuster is a little square drive do uh, do that, and um, the idea is that you're supposed to be able to put a spanner on it and turn it so that you can. Uh, wind in or out the shoes and unfortunately it's just not turning for me so uh, i'm able to get a kind of a 932 spanner on there anyway but oh there the quarter does go on let's have a look and see well this is our first problem all right let's uh let's have a think about this i'm thinking this is going to give us hassle folks so uh i've got a vice grips clamped on the thing on the back and it's not budging at all I think what I might have to do is take off the uh, take off the adjuster and to be honest with you I think it's probably the handiest thing to do at this rate because at least you can dose it with lubricant and all that because you can't really lubricate it with it in situ not without ruining your brake linings Kind of annoying, but ow, 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 ow. all right. I can avoid taking all of the bubbles off. When it breaks, I will. But I'll take what I need to take off. So okay, right there we go. Now um, there's two nuts on the back holding it on. So I'm going to just go and get my um, get a suitable socket and uh, lubricate it and try and work them out without breaking the bloody things. Right, let's see now how we get on.
Just take your time as you get out, get out of these situations. Okay, so now this should come out unless there's more than uh, two, uh, two nuts. I'll just get a little hammer and just give it a tap. There we go. So now that allows us to bring this over to the bench and get it working. So uh, yeah, she's not looking great now in fairness. All right, so I just have the uh, I have the square part of it just clamped in the uh, vise. I'm just going to try and work this back and forth and just see. That is rock solid. May have to get a bit of heat onto that even. Problem is, if I have to get another one of these, that's just going to hold the whole show up. So, um, yeah, I mean, get it, get it soaking. I'm going to just try and clean it first of all. Get some uh, brake uh, brake cleaner in there first, spray it all out, and then uh, get some uh, oil into it and see if we can free it up that way. And look at that, we're actually using brake cleaner for what it's intended for. Let's get a blowtorch onto that and give it a bit of heat. Well, who'd have thunk it? The brake cleaner went on fire. <laughs> there you go. It's moving. That was never going to shift on the car. Not in a fit. Now you see the thing about it is it can move like this, but whether or not it's actually going to shift the, the two parts that it's supposed to be moving is a whole other issue. So let's, uh, let's see if we can address them as well. So I need to get it into the vice the other way, but uh, without touching it. <laughs> need to be able to get those bits out at the sides. This is not going to work until I can get them out. So let's uh, let's see if we can get something that'll uh, get in there, and if we can get it, give them a little twist, then uh, we should be able to make some sort of headway with them. <laughs> oh, that one's actually free. <laughs> so we take that out, and hopefully do. Oh, look, the other one's free as well. I don't believe for a second that they were free beforehand, but great. So now, now all we need to do is just get that uh, threaded piece down there sorted out, and then we uh, we can kind of go from there. Like, it's still very tight to turn. I mean, unacceptably so. You wouldn't want you wouldn't want it been this tight when you're trying to adjust your brakes. So now let's see, that hopefully we'll, we'll go all the way through now and then we'll be able to get it out and give it a clean. Yeah, because everything was stuffed with grease, you couldn't really see down into it to see what was actually, what arrangement it was. But there you go, that's the actual, uh, that's the, the threaded part out anyway. So now um, that means that we can actually clean everything up and get it all uh, functioning correctly and um, put it back together again. So uh, happy days. That's uh, at least that's uh, that's one side uh, pretty much sorted. So I'll bring it back when I have that done. I think that looks pretty good now, actually. So uh, you can see it's free to move. It's all greased up and everything like that. It didn't go too mad on the grease. I actually haven't got the proper high temperature copper grease. So for the moment, anyway, it'll, the the, uh, the lithium grease I have in it will have to do. So long as you spare, you use it sparingly. You're not going to contaminate your brake linings. Um, so uh, yeah. Anyway, that's. Uh, that's all back together again, so let's uh, let's refit it to the car. All right, so that's uh, that's that back in place. Anyway, everything is pretty much connected up. So let's just pop the drum back on, and see how uh, see how everything's looking. It should be yeah, uh, pretty good. Now, so 
first things first, before we do anything else, let, well, let's get those two little screws in because uh, they are going to be, where the hell are they gone even? <laughs> uh, oh yeah, they're over here. Uh, they're just going to keep the drum in place for us because it, because the fact that the uh, adjuster's on the outside now and we know it's working, we shouldn't have a need to take the drum off again. So what we're doing is we're now we're going to adjust the brakes so that there's just a little bit of uh, drag on it, uh, like the, the pads are just starting to rub. Um, and then we'll leave it at that and then we'll do the same on the other side and then we can adjust our handbrake so that it's on after four clicks basically. I'm not going to go too mad in tightening them because we do actually want to be able to get them out again at some point. Now, hopefully our quarter spanner will do, it will do the trick this time. This is anything to go by the run already. Let's give the drum a few taps just to seat the shoes. Yeah, see that? The shoes are just riding up on the adjuster. We'll keep going like this until they're right and then I'll bring you back. All right, so what I'm happy, uh, I'm happy enough with that now. So literally, it, it, it kind of clicks as you turn it because there's little flats on the cone-shaped piece on the bolt that goes through the adjuster. So what you do is, uh, or what, what I did basically anyway, is I, I had the drum turning, I kept tapping it as it was going around as you saw, and then it got to a point where the adjuster tightened and the drum was locked, okay? So from that point, I went back two clicks. And if I go back to that point again now, it'll, uh, it'll uh, end up locking up again. So um, we could even probably nearly go one more click. Er, one more click. Let's just try it and see. No. There we go. Good enough. That'll do us fine. So uh, let's do the other side and hopefully the adjuster is serviceable on that. I have a good mind to kind of take it apart and clean it anyway, to tell you the truth, if this one is like this. Okay, so unfortunately we're after coming across a bit of a snag. Now you'll see that I'm after stripping down the uh, the drum on this side. Although everything looks good um, when I took over, when I opened up the slave cylinder, that's the kind of crap that's going on inside there. So I don't think that's going to pass for some reason. Um, now uh, I took the pistons out of it, and uh, there's one of them there and uh, the other one is not much better to be honest with you so i mean realistically i need a new set of slave cylinders i could try and clean them ones up but i just don't think that's the right way to go about it to tell you the truth so yeah uh slave cylinders on the back at least the adjusters are freed up the one on this side was seized as well so certainly needed to be done i have yet to check the slave cylinder on the other side but i think it's a fair assumption to make it's going to be the same kind of story there to tell you the truth so yeah um so basically i need to get some parts unfortunately i'm now wondering what the front is going to be like as well so uh, like if the back is like this then the front is going to be in an awful state as well fortunately enough i do have a seal kit for the uh I have a set of pistons and a seal kit for, for the other car, so I don't need to order any parts necessarily uh, in this instance for the front, unless it needs discs, but uh, I'm hoping that isn't the case. I want to have a look and see. I thought I ordered a set of uh, uh, brake uh, slave cylinders for um, for the other car, but, um, you know, I mean, obviously I can replace them at a later stage, you know, I mean, for the other car when it comes, back, it comes time to actually do the work on that. But, uh, yeah, I'll see. If I have them, then we'll fit them. If not, then... That's basically as far as we can get at the moment. Okay, I gave them a belt of the wire wheel and inspected the seals and uh, had a look inside the bore of the slave cylinder and it's actually all right, <laughs> to be honest with you. Now, um, I'll watch it closely, and uh, but I'm going to put these back together again. What I will do is I'll order another couple of slave cylinders anyway and um, at least they'll be there for me. And um, yeah, look, if they don't leak in the first couple of hundred miles of me driving it, they're not going to leak for a good while yet. So, um, yeah, I'll just pop these back together anyway. And at least that way, then we know that the, uh, we know they're all right. Like, you know, I mean, in fairness, the, as I said, the bore in there is absolutely fine. Um, it's clean now and all that as well. So, so yeah, um, we'll do that. Okay, so I uh, decided I'd show you a bit more of what's going on on this side. So, uh, same situation, the uh, slave cylinder is seized up. Now... See the way I can't turn that piston there, right? And uh, that tells me that it's seized up. Now this one will turn, so at least it means it's it's easier to get out. 
I took the seal off already. Now that one looks a hell of a lot better than the ones did on the other side and I reckon if I clean that up that'll be all right. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to get a hammer and I'm going to get, oh, you guys are on top of my hammer. There we go. Uh, I'm going to get a hammer and a socket extension in this instance and we're going to get it in there and we're going to just tap out the one on the other side. There we go. So that's it. So now we can uh, take the dust cover off this one. And you can see the shite that's on it there, like, you know what I mean? But that's, like, to be honest with you, a lot of that is down to people just not changing the brake fluid when it needs to be changed. But, like, yeah, it's dirty inside the slave cylinder here, but I'm going to inspect it now in a second and have a look and see if it's scored. But the one on the other side wasn't. It was really just dirty. So, uh, and it's the dirt that'll bind it up. But uh, once you kind of clean up the seals and everything like that, you might be lucky. The other thing I've noticed is the handbrake lever is seized up on this as well, so that needs to be freed up. That is, um, you know, I mean, that that's part of the mechanism that'll operate the handbrake. So the handbrake is just not going to co work correctly with it like that. So we'll uh, we'll have to address that. Um, I was probably a bit preemptive in putting the drum back on. Well, I know it was preemptive in putting the drum back on, but uh, the um, the fact of the matter is, I now have it off and I'm fixing it. So. You know, all's well that ends well. But uh, yeah, I'm not going to take that uh, handbrake lever off. All I'm going to do is I'm just going to clean it in situ and uh, get it uh, get it freed up. I just get a wire wheel on the drill. But no, that's uh, that's feeling fine in there to be honest with you. And clean up those pistons, get them uh, coated with a layer of brake fluid, and um, pop them back in again. And um, I take the seals off before I clean them. You know, so. Uh, and then we put the seal back on. So yeah, it should be all right. We'll see how we go. All right, so there we have it. They're looking a hell of a lot better now anyway, so I'm uh, happy enough to refit them, to be honest with you. So uh, let's uh, let's get it all put back together here now. So the first thing I'm gonna do is uh, pour a little bit of brake fluid over each of these and just literally uh, pop them in and we put our dust covers on. And then uh, I'll show you actually me putting the shoes in as well. All right, uh, you'll see by the way I uh, I did free that up as well there, so that's uh, that's all done. So there we go. That's a little bit of a uh, lubrication for the seal. So that goes in nicely. You just have to be careful not to fold the um, the seal back on itself when you're putting putting these in. By the way, folks, I've done this before successfully, so this isn't uh, me taking a chance on something. I mean, in fairness, if it's not right. After I've done this, I'll get a new set of uh, slave cylinders into it. Now, there we go. Now let's get our dust covers on and we can start installing our shoes. All right, so there's the uh, dust covers in place. So now uh, let's try and get our shoes in place now. So there is a, uh, like all uh, drum brakes, they're a bit fiddly, but you know what? If you do it one side at a time, at least you have something to go back on, and you can uh, you can compare. But what I like to do is um, just uh, hook the uh, the uh, shoes together like this. I need to pull that out, and get that into position first of all. So that that'll go like that, and get that onto there. That's that, that shoe is in place now. And now we can get this one into place. And literally, it's just a case of getting the handbrake lever in as well. There we go. Oh, feck, what the hell fell off? Oh, I know exactly what it was. It was one of those pins that retains the, retains the drum. And it fell into the, I oh, know, it just went there. Grant, okay. Right, so that's that. Uh, now, um, Next thing to do is we need to get the other spring that goes along here. Now, there is a right way and a wrong way of putting it on. 
um, you uh, you put it on basically uh, so that the the flat part here isn't fouling on the slave cylinder. And also, <laughs> that's the other thing, that the, the flat to the springs are like this. If you try and put it on the other way around, you just end up bending it. So it goes like this. And I'll just get it along those pliers. And just stretch it into position and there we go. That was a good one. Right, okay, so that's that one in now. So the last thing to do now is to just put our uh, retaining pins in. And, um, oh, there's my can of brake clean. So now the, we put our pins in the back. And we pop, pop out the other side and we get a spring and the collet. And get our long nose pliers again. Grab the whole thing, like so. And just basically uh, fumble it into place. Where's the pin go? There it is there. Okay, and just keep your finger on the pin at the back. And just, they're finicky, but and a 90 degree turn that's one of them same on the other side and then we will uh, do the same job all over again of uh, setting up the um setting up the drum and uh, getting the uh, getting the, the adjustment correct and then we will um then we'll be much closer to the mark so yeah we're getting there now this time at least we know we have working slave cylinders or at least they're better than they were Okay, so now that both uh, rear drums have been repaired and adjusted and all that sort of thing, the next thing to do is to adjust the handbrake. So what we do now is slither under, underneath the car to the, uh, I think it's a half, it's either half inch or nine sixteenth uh, nut on the end of the handbrake cable. And um, you basically, you put the handbrake on four clicks and you adjust that so that the wheels are locked up at the back. And... Um, but are still free to rotate when you let it off again, so that's an important thing to check as well. But uh, yeah, so we're uh, let's uh, let's do that now. Anyway, uh, I'm not even going to film it to be honest with you because I cannot get the camera. I can't do it with the camera underneath the car. So uh, if I had a ramp, yeah, certainly I would, but I'm not going to do it. Okay, so we have the uh, handbrake all adjusted. So so that's uh, four clicks on, obviously, and the drum is not turning. Same on the other side, take my word for it. <laughs> uh, you can go another couple of clicks on it, obviously, uh, but uh, letting it off, I can turn the, I can turn the drum. So uh, yeah, I'm uh, happy with that. So that's, uh, that's spot on. So um, yeah, at least we have, uh, uh, we've, got, uh, we've got back brakes, we've got a handbrake, and uh, the only thing we need to do now, obviously, is bleed the hydraulic system. And uh, I want to, before I do that, I want to just have a look at the um, rubber lines and make sure that they're all serviceable. The metal ones look fine. There's actually uh, no corrosion we're talking about on them, and uh, which is fantastic. But uh, yeah, I'm going to just uh, slide under the car, just check that rubber line that goes up onto the axle, make sure it's all right. And if it needs to be replaced, I have a spare one I can put it on. So um now it's the time to kind of tackle these type of jobs. So uh, yeah, because I'm going to be flushing the brake lines anyway, especially when you consider the shite that was in those uh, slave cylinders. I think it's probably a prudent move. Wait until you see the state of the rear brake line. I'm not sure whether you can see that there or not, but that's it. And it is blistered, it's damp, and it is genu generally in a very, very bad state. So um, that's got to go. So uh, let's uh, see how much luck we have in cracking off that uh, union up there. I'm going to get some more light on the subject in here. You have to ask yourself how they get that bad. I mean, that's crazy. And the fact that it's got a... All uh... oh, right, hang on a second. There's a date on it. 0979. <laughs> so this car was built in 1979 then. I actually want to get the birth cert for it. Well, at least that brake hose was made in 1979 anyway, at the very least. But yeah, I want to get the... Well, I put a bucket under there. <laughs> uh, yeah, so um, 
Right, we'll put the new one in. Well, that tears the arse out of that. The bloody brake hose that I got is different. Yeah, that end is completely different. It's internally and externally threaded. So the external thread takes the uh, lock nut and the internal thread takes the um, takes a, a male um, fitting. But that uh, the car has a female fitting. That's basically what's on it. Oh, that's a pain in the stones now, that is. Right, well, if I'm going to be buying uh, new brake hoses, I'm going to get a new bloody uh, pair of slave cylinders for the back of the car as well, and I'm going to stick them in. The job is worth doing, it's worth doing twice. Ah, oh, yeah. For any of you doubting Thomases out there, here's the new slave cylinder, there's the old one. So I am replacing them. I also got the new brake line. So uh, I'm not going to film any of this, I'm literally just putting them in. And uh, I'll come back when the back brakes are all done. Literally, these are just held in with a, a um, little circlip, basically. And it comes with a new circlip. That's the old one there. And... Um, the only thing you need to be careful of there really is that you don't twist the brake line when you're taking it off the back. Just uh, use a, use penetrating oil and take your time, that's all I can suggest there. Okay, so the back brakes are now complete. There are new slave cylinders installed. The handbrake cable has been all greased up and the uh, uh, everything is adjusted and I've put the new flexi in as well. So that's all uh, That's all finished. So now onto the front. So uh, that's a whole other ball game. Now you'll see I've already made a start just to see what the state of play is before I kind of turn the camera on. Okay, so the first thing we notice is the wheel bearing is shot, okay? The top bushing in the trunnion is shot. The lower bushings are shot. The spring is looking fairly crusty. God knows what the shock absorbers are like. Track rod end is shot. And that's before we even look at the brakes, okay? Okay, so using compressed air, I popped the pistons out of this caliper from the left-hand side of the car and kind of cleaned up the pistons. And to be honest with you, they're looking a bit pitted and sorry for themselves. But I have a seal kit and I have new pistons to go into those calipers, okay? Now, unfortunately, here comes a bit of a conundrum. Okay, I have been having a bit of a think and I've asked my good lady wife as well what she thinks as well and we're both in agreement that the front subframe that I fixed up for the purple car needs to come off it and go onto this car, okay? Because the purple car is going to be years down the line before I ever get to it, okay? To tell you the truth. I mean, realistically what I want to do is I want to be able to get it to a point where Owen here can uh, help me work on it and um, I want this brown car on the road soon, okay? Grant, well there you go. Good man. So, so that could be a few years away yet, okay? But um, it is something to look forward to and everything as well. And rest assured, there will be plenty of other things to do. But um, yeah, so what we're gonna do is, I'm gonna take the front subframe out of this car, I'm gonna take the front subframe out of that car, and I'm going to basically st uh, finish off that one. There's only just a couple of things like bolts need tightening and that kind of stuff that needs to be done on that. And then we can bolt it into this car here with all new bushings, ball joints, kingpins, uh, all greased up and everything like that. And uh, we'll be good to go. And uh, also I have put new brake discs with new wheel bearings on it as well. So um, definitely I think I'm making the right decision because this car is so nice it deserves it. And uh, the purple car, although will be nice, isn't at the moment. As is always the way with this, um, you know, it turned into a much bigger job than I was expecting, given the fact that the front, uh, the front suspension components are looking fairly tired as well. So there's no point in rushing this job and uh, ending up with a car I'm just not happy with. So it will be, um, it'll be a case of uh, swapping out that subframe, as I said. But uh, what we'll do is I'm gonna divide it up into multiple videos. So we're gonna leave it there at this point. So we've got the back brakes done. We've assessed everything. We've got the front caliper stripped down. We know we need a pair of wheel bearings on the front. The wheel bearings on the back seem to be okay, but it's hard to say at this stage because it, you can't turn the wheel without turning the diff as well. So we'll just have to find out in due course. I have a set of rear wheel bearings if we need to do them. Yep. So yeah, we will um, we'll pick this up in another video, as I said, uh, get that other subframe installed uh, after we've removed it from the other car. And um, I'll see if I can get a, pair, a second pair of axle stands or something like that as well, just to uh, get the purple car up onto and uh, just make my life easier, to be honest with you. And um, we'll go from there. And at least that way, then everything on the front suspension is kind of done in one fell swoop. If you look back through my previous videos, you will have seen me actually overhauling that front subframe frame so um it's not like a case where you guys haven't seen this being done it's being done it's just for a different car but uh, it'll be done all over again for the purple car 
at a later stage. So anyway, listen, thanks for, thanks for joining me, folks, and uh, I will chat to you soon. Please do hit the subscribe button before you go and little bell notification icon. That will notify you if there are any future videos coming your way that uh, uh, either about this car or the uh, camper van is blowing its turbo. The golf sounds like it might need new gearbox, so I'm really not. I'm really hoping it doesn't, but uh, the gearbox is sounding very, very wonky indeed. Yeah, and the beetle needs a whole load of work done to it. So we've lots and lots to do, and that's uh, in amongst all of the other little tasks. So I will, uh, I will chat to you soon, and so will I'm sure Owen in the background here as well. What do you think? You gonna say bye bye? Bye bye. Talk to you soon, folks.